Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and today I am travelling to Minmus once again. It is an easy target, and therefore it is a perfect target for super minimal spacecraft such as this, which comes in at a shade under two tonnes. It has room for one Kerbal perched precariously on top. We have a willing volunteer here, and he is going to travel with this vehicle all the way to a moon and back. Now you see the way the aircraft, uh, the air intakes are embedded there, that does require no clip, so you can already shout, hey cheater, um, but uh, there is a version which has the air intakes slightly expanded away from this, it's just over two tons. Uh, it doesn't really ultimately affect the, the total delta V available for this vehicle, because this actually runs out of... It runs out of oxygen before it runs out of fuel in that stage. Uh, there may be places I can shave shave a, a little bit of load, but I mean the, the the concept is pretty clear. You know, you use the you use the main turbojet to get yourself up to near orbital velocity. You then use the rocket motor on the upper stage to put yourself into orbit and head off. Now, Kerbal Space Program Point Two One has made two crucial changes to this um, to this particular endeavor. First of all, it has added a new version of the a new small rocket motor, the Rockamax, which is essentially the radial engine, but it is actually slightly higher specific impulse. So this actually gives us more fuel to play with, or at least more delta V ultimately. The the other thing is that you now require uh, power to make that solar probe work and you see here I am now in a situation where I have to make this burn on the dark side of the planet but with no uh, power for my reaction uh, reaction motor system so I'm just you know using the I'm just using the vet thrust vectoring and that engine to get myself under control and then once I come around the light side of the planet I can reorient it so that the solar panel is facing the Sun if you do uh, if you do it the wrong way if you time accelerate at the wrong time you could be in trouble because the only way to rotate the spacecraft is to use that engine and of course that engine uses precious fuel which you need to get out to the planet out to this moon so yeah standard uh, injection you know I kind of didn't quite get things perfectly right. Flying that jet engine is actually pretty hard. It does want to kind of wobble uh, off center. So my initial orbit was inclined a little and then Minmus was not quite at the right position. So there needed to be a little bit of a, an inclination change, but you know, that's fine. We, we only needed 11 meters per second to do that. And then we make a few more adjustments here. We want to come in uh, in the equatorial plane of Minmus, right? It's rotating, and you want to make sure you're orbiting in the same direction it's rota as its rotation so that you minimize the amount of fuel and delta V required to actually put yourself down on the surface. And so there I am. I'm much more, much happier with my final orbit. There we go. And I'm like, okay, need a little more tweaking there. Uh, get myself out. This is all a uh, fuel which I should probably have preserved for. I should have probably done this right in the first place, but uh, you know, I made the magic two ton mark. There may be pl places I can shave things off. Now, here, normally you would circularize your orbit, right? I am not going to circularize my orbit, and there is a reason for this. The reason is that. I am going to descend to the surface of Minmus using the EVA pack, right? And if I can leave the spacecraft on a an elliptical orbit, then it will be moving faster. You see here it's moving 214. Typically, I think orbital velocity above Minmus is 150. Right Now, the EVA pack that the Kerbals have gives you about 550 meters per second. So by leaving it on this orbit, I've essentially given myself an extra 100 meters per second of delta V in the parent spacecraft, which can be essential given that landing needs you need on the planet Kerbin requires you to slow down by about 100 meters per second. Nevertheless, our Kerbal is now descending towards the surface. He's looking for a nice high point to land on to, again, minimize the amount of fuel needed. One other change I've noticed in Kerbal Space Program 0.21 is that 
I can no longer get the reaction pack, the, the EVA pack, to actually produce any thrust while in the map screen. So you're going to see me changing back and forth between the map screen and the uh, astronaut as I try to land this thing because I'm guessing where, you know, where I'm going to come down and making adjustments one way or another. Now, there I go, adjusting my orbit. Because I can't see it. He seems quite happy, I see. And so now it's just totally judging this by hand, or judging this by eye, by the seat of my pants, which are, of course, inside a spacesuit at this point. So that means they will probably be liquid-cooled pants, because that's one of the problems that th people have with spacesuits, is temperature regulation or thermal regulation. Uh, the underwear and the, the undergarments on most spacesuits are have water passing through them in tubes because uh, they want to keep the astronaut comfortable and you know if you're in daylight you get very very hot very quickly and if you're in nights you get cold very quickly and so you need to regulate both of these um but look ha <laughs> ha touch down on this planet and about 48 percent of my fuel is left so i perhaps used a little more than i needed to on that landing but i can i can get around that Go for a little walk on the surface. I think I'm going to go up to the highest point on the, the planet I can find. G take a look at the sunrise, because, you know, it's nice to come all the way to this planet just to appreciate the sunrise over the, the turquoise-coloured blobby surface, which bears no resemblance to any sane planet. I mean, seriously, this must be a very young surface, because there's no craters on it, right? And, so uh, I think this might have been liquid in living memory, to be honest. <laughs> the, oh, I'm so happy. That's what he is. He's, he's very happy to have made it. He's going to have a formidable job again uh, ahead of him, of course. He has to return to return to the, the spacecraft using just the EVA fuel and rendezvous, ideally. Anyway, he found a nice place to watch the sunrise and as sat there for a, a long time i guess 45 minutes after he landed the sun comes up and there we go viewing from up here we can watch the sun spread across the surface of this moon illuminating it revealing the field of boulders which of course he was very lucky not to crash into anyway business back to business get that flag down because let's face it or because we did refer we did forget that we did forget to bring a flag last time if you remember flew all the way to minmus and then never actually planted a flag on the surface that was rather embarrassing if you ask me but this time he's leaving a flag to remind everyone that he walked here with a little help from a spacecraft but honestly it wasn't much of a spacecraft so i think that's okay to call this a walk but time to suit up time to get into the air and Pick up some speed, get back up to orbital velocity. Uh, head towards the sun, of course, because that will be the rotation of the planet. We're pretty close to the equator. Might have to make some inclination changes and things like that to line things up. But otherwise, I think we'll be okay. So, to get into orbit, we're going to need about 150 meters per second or thereabouts. And, and just to put this in perspective, I've already mentioned the space shuttle had these man maneuvering units they tested that were essentially large jetpacks for astronauts to use flying around and doing you know space astronaut type stuff. They tried to rescue a satellite with them, for example. They have 25 meters per second of delta V completely. And that meant that, you know... <laughs> I think that means basically they have 5% of the fuel that this thing can manage. But that is a vastly copious quantity compared with the safer system which is currently in use on the uh, ISS. Now, the spacesuits there, they have a backpack which does include very limited uh, maneuvering capacity. And this is primarily intended as a sort of safety issue, that a safety device. If you float away from the station somehow without a tether, you would have enough delta V to push yourself back to the station and uh, recover yourself. Uh, these things have a total of two meters per second delta V. So <laughs> that's less than one half of 1% of what every Kerbal has. So yes, 
we're now trying to perform this rendezvous. We we've put ourselves onto an eccentric orbit. Of course, we at the eccentric at the most uh, at the most distant node. That's when we want to adjust our inclination, get them as close as possible. And then I'm trying to figure out. You see how I'm trying to put the encounter as close together as possible. This is tiny, tiny tweaking of of the thing. Unfortunately. There's a limit to how short you can generate, how short a pulse you can generate with these uh, maneuvering systems. And the problem I'm having to look back at this map is very, very frustrating. Of course, most spacecraft don't have this kind of navigation system built in, so this probably still qualifies as cheating, right? <laughs> anyway, I get the I get the approach distance down to about 0.4 kilometers and uh, start tweaking things, switch to this other spacecraft just to see how it's doing, make sure I'm oriented the right way because this thing is going to be flying around the dark side and we do want to make sure that the solar panel is still oriented correctly. If it isn't, it, he could get onto this spacecraft and then find that it's unfortunately got no power. Uh, yeah, we're just going to approach this very slowly you see the the fuel coming down so I'm tweaking it here and there there's no no guidelines other than me eyeballing thing there's no first person view and honestly the difference between a hundred meters and zero meters is frankly quite a large distance when you're a one meter spacecraft if you miss it, <laughs> so the map telling me that I've got an encounter of zero kilometers really isn't actually that helpful. Uh, however, yeah, we switch back to this spacecraft, and at this point, I'm going to use the the nav ball to kind of fix the to perform like a final approach. I want to leave a small reserve because he's going to need it for final final encounters. Getting into that seat using the least amount of fuel possible. And boarded! Yay! He has recovered himself. And now important is to turn that solar panel back towards the sun. Yay. And so how much? Yes, 2%. Excellent. I think I did pretty well on that. Although I'm sure you could do even better. So now... um. I need to return to the planet Kerbin, and one unfortunate thing is because I'm essentially on the dark side, if I burn now, uh, I will end up on the dark side of Kerbin, and given that I don't have much power, I tried to avoid that, so I waited for this thing to go around its orbit a few times. Uh, ultimately, I, uh, after going far, to, I thought that I was in a good position to do this, so I burned myself off, put myself in an encounter with the planet, leaving myself with just a, a sliver of fuel to perform the landing on Kerbin. Well, <laughs> there we go, falling down and just trying to orient the map. There we go. Kerbin and the moon spinning round it. We spent like six days in space. Yes, in the one space suit. I know. Uh, we turned off the stabilizer because, unfortunately, despite my best efforts, it still did end up on the dark side. So I deliberately turned off auto stabilization and just let this thing go down. We will be draining power continuously from the uh, battery, from the very small battery that is on board that probe. Now, what I want to do is wait until I get down very slow, and you see that I, my battery power is decreasing, right? I want to get myself vertical, and I, once I get myself vertical, I will be actively controlling it and I'll be using power. And I've got to make sure that I land on the surface before I run out of power, because that will kill me as surely as running out of fuel. And so with a bit of wobbling, got myself pointing the right way. Time is running out, fuel is running out, power is running out. Actually, fuel is about to start running out. This is going to be a suicide burn of the, the most suicidal last minute nature. Just gonna wait until I'm about 400 meters up. That seems like a good number. And go! Oh crap! 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 No! Oh, oh, we a little early there. A little early. And oh. okay. Did he survive? Did he survive? Yes! He survived! <laughs> what a brilliant! What a hero! Making it all the way back to Kerbin, landing. He destroyed his entire spacecraft. But 
He's landed. He is in one piece. He is a true Kerbal hero in every sense of the world. word. <laughs> I am Scott Manley. Fly safe. <laughs>